So looking at it in detail, we've got positive and negative supply through this socket into these blocks here, and then each of those positive and negative supply runs to the switch, with the negative supply also being a common return to all the point motor areas. So effectively this area down here would be the switching area, and these two wires are the wires that go off to the point area. Point motor is fitted up here. I've used the Velcro to position it. I found that relatively easy. I used the card as before when I was drilling the holes to put the point in its center position and then just put the point motor through the hole and applied it to the Velcro and adjusted it as necessary. That was really easy to do. Um, the wiring for the point motor I've soldered on. The advantage of that is that if this point motor fails, I can simply undo the screws on the blocks down here and take that unit out and just put another one straight in. I can show you here that I've um, put the six wires from the point motor on the outside of the blocks and used the centre two sections for the capacitor. That's a 2200 microfarad capacitor, 35 volts as recommended by Brian Lambert. And then what that means is that I don't have any long wires, I can just put that straight in there. The diodes, again, straight into these chop blocks. This means I haven't got to build a PCB or design a Vero board for all this. I can just put these straight in. If any component fails, they can just come straight out again. Obviously these um, the block, chop blocks here are screwed or nailed to the underside of the board. These contacts here are going to be just for testing so that I can apply the um, DCC power through the frog wire. What I found with the point motor is that the throw of the motor is actually long, larger than the throw of the point itself. So, just to highlight this distance here, that this travels is less than the actual throw available within the motor, which is important to get it centered. What I also found is that the where the switch moves over for the frog, you need to get that aligned properly so that when it throws, it completely clears the switch for each side of the power supply to the frog. Um, that's the area that's most critical, that's more critical than the actual throw of the point because the point with spring will tend to throw it completely over anyway so it's the switching that's actually critical in positioning the point motor. Okay now I've um, got it all set up and running, I'm going to do some testing. I've got the Hornby Select here with power, DCC power supply through the red and black wires directly into the track. Uh, and then running along here, more red and black wires supplying power to the point for the switching of the supply through the frog, which is on the green wire. And then because of the insulated fish plates here to protect the electro frog, these lines would be dead. So I've got supply on the yellow and white wires running from the main line. Underneath, we've got the red and black wires from the track going into those copper wires on the blocks there and that then there just gets switched through the point motor through this green wire back up to the frog so now we'll give it a go so switching works okay quite um, noiseless there's no buzzing noise that I've done is here on other people's layouts just a good solid throw with a single click. Works really well. I'm going to use the little Jinty for testing, so forward we go. Onto the point, going up to the gap, across the gap, completely on the frog, and over to the other side. That'll be this. Getting caught on the plugs there. And then back it up. Oh, little stop there, but kept going. Slow it down, switch direction, switch the point, try the other side. Onto the frog, and over to the other side. Let's run it back really slowly and see how it gets on with real slow movement. Because this is the, one of the benefits of the electro frog point is that you can hopefully get really reliable slow running across the points. It seems to be going okay. So now that it's all working, I can fit the two express points to the loop in position 
they're both going to be running from the same control, same switch, so I'll use that little bracket with the switch and power supply for the two together.